There may have been another chupacabra sighting not too far from here. That's the mysterious animal known for sucking the blood out of goats. The animal killing, blood sucking chupacabra. A beast sometimes described as an alien like creature resembling a griffin. Farm animals have been killed and drained of their blood by a mysterious creature. It looks more like something out of a horror movie. It was the work of the chupacabra. The chupacabra lives. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Come on! If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction. Science meets legend. Where nightmares come to life. Oh my god! Lost Tapes, Chupacabra. In 2006, the Ramirez family received two gifts from a relative in the United States. One was a video camera for their daughter Ava's ninth birthday. The second gift was a letter stating that a coyote had been hired to smuggle them across the border. The journey was more dangerous than anyone could have imagined. These are their tapes. Mija, okay. Mi mamá. Pero, pero, okay, pero mija. We're going to the United States. We're going. We're going to the United States. No te preocupes. Todo va a estar bien. Pero Carlos a mí me da mucho pendiente. Nearly 2,000 people died along the border between 1998 and. 2004. In 2005 alone, there were more than 500 deaths. Chupa started in South America, then took Puerto Rico by storm in 1995. But most of the recent Chupacabra activity has been in Mexico. I've been patrolling these back roads for a long time, and I've never run across anything like this until that day. It looks a lot like this creature found dead in Cuero last year. Tested by Texas State University, it was reported to be a coyote deformed by sarcoptic mange. I've seen a lot of mangy coyotes in my day, and that is not a coyote. You're getting a fear in people that can turn into hysteria and might lead to something dangerous. These are bite marks, okay? Look at them. We have quite a few of them. What explanation can you give for something like this? We're not near ready to put this one to bed yet. She's convinced it was the work of the chupacabra. Adios, Roberto. Voy a extrañarte. Voy a ir a America. ¿Dónde estamos? 
Since the U.S. Border Patrol intensified its efforts, alien smuggling has become more difficult. Smugglers charge up to $30,000 for the dangerous journey. Border Patrol officials said it is the coyotes that are to blame for leading migrants into remote parts of the Sonora Desert. They don't care about the safety and welfare of these people. All they care about is their money. Muchos muertos, de frío, de calor, de hambre, civilización y todo eso. They tell you they're, that they're going to go get some water or something, they'll be right back. Don't believe that. They're going to abandon you. Estoy tranquila, ¿ok? Estoy. ¡Eh, Carlos! Pero ¡Vaya, mami, vaya! ¡Voy a ganarlo! ¡Voy a ganarlo! ¡Muévete! ¡Déjame! ¡Yo me ocupo de esto! ¡Pero cómo nos va a dejar aquí! ¿Pero cómo es posible? ¡Con mi familia! Having been deposited in the middle of the desert, the Ramirez family attempted to reach the border and cross on foot. Vamos, mija. Ya falta poco. No sé. Nada. Vamos, camínale, mija. Con cuidado. Mija, ven. U.S. border agents Tom Valentine and Martin Santino were on patrol west of Nogales, Arizona, when they received a routine report of an illegal border crossing. What they discovered upon investigation was anything but routine. Base to Unit 2. Unit 2, please respond. 
one of Border Breach, approximately 3.6 miles east of checkpoint 7220. GPS coordinates being sent to your unit. Surveillance has detected three to four crossers. You should see them, right? Surveillance has detected four crossers. At first they said there were three, then they said there were four, and, and now there's none. It's not making any sense. We're losing some of them. Unit 2, please respond to scene. Well, let's go take a look here. What do you think did this? The heat. Let me see what happened here. I don't feel a pulse. Let me... Jeez! Come look at this. Right here. I don't know about the heat, man, but this one's got three puncture wounds, and you know what? I don't see any blood. Exposure, heat stroke, and dehydration are the most frequent causes of death at the border. However, the evidence here pointed to something far more mysterious. Oh God, this one's got the same thing. Three puncture wounds and no blood. Check down in the wash. Okay. Look, there's something right down there. I see it. We have two confirmed oh. deceased here. I have confirmed that um, male and a female probably in their uh, 30s. Tom, there's something in the bush, man. Tom. There's something in there? There's something in there. Tom! There's something in there? There's something in there. Valentine and Santino discovered Ava at the scene, unhurt, but clearly terrified. Let's go, Martin. All right, okay. It's okay, it's okay. 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 Just relax, okay? I have to go back. What did she say? She's dying. I need to go out. She's okay. out. She I didn't want you to leave, but she's saying it, whatever it is, is out there. That's what she's saying. Attempting to locate additional survivors, Officer Santino searched the nearby brush. Okay. What is that noise? Hello? 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 Hello?
you're there, please. I'm just here to help. Oh, it spilled off. This is crazy. This is just crazy. Again, no blood. your name? Eva. Eva. <laughs> Pretty friend there. Puerco. Puerco. Oh, everything's gonna be all right. You and Puerco. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. I'll be right there. There's something out there, man. I'm, I'm not making this up. There's something out there. You stay right no. here. Official Border Patrol incident report lists the cause of death of Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez as unknown. Got it. Yeah, I got it. You coming or you want to stay out here all night? Hey, glad you got here. We got two uh, deceased here and uh, I got one uh, little girl in the truck. She's alive. The report noted unidentifiable puncture wounds on the victims and a mysterious lack of blood. However, it did not make mention of any creature. To this day, agents Valentine and Santino refuse to discuss the incident. Ava Ramirez was returned to her grandmother in Mexico, plagued by nightmares of a creature that science still refuses to recognize. But like so many other witnesses, for Ava, it was all too real. I think Bigfoot is an animal that we already know from the fossil record. It's a fair presumption that this was an erect bipedal animal, standing perhaps eight feet tall, weighing about 800 pounds, and being uh, presumably covered with hair. And uh, this, of course, is an exact description of the living Sasquatch. 911, what are you reporting? Uh, we got something crawling around out here. I can't tell. He's sound to rip people apart if he gets chopped. What do you think they ought to do about him? Kill him. 
You might hurt somebody. It was walking very much like a human. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Come on! Go! If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend, where nightmares come to life. Oh my God. Do you believe? Lost tapes. Bigfoot. In 2005, Rachel Glenn was assigned to investigate the illegal hunting of black bears whose population was being decimated in the Pacific Northwest. She documented her efforts through a combination of field journals, surveillance cameras, and online web reports. In addition to the evidence of poaching, between August 2nd and August 14th, she also noticed strange, unidentifiable sounds in the area and the distinct feeling she was being watched by what or whom she did not know. These are her tapes. Four black bears were found today, abandoned by the side of County Road 18. The paws and gallbladders of the bears had all been removed. Today is August 2nd. Poaching seems to be on the increase this season. I myself was caught in a snare today. I disabled it and will continue to disable any snares that I come across. I've been hearing some strange noises that I can't identify with any of the wildlife in this area. I will continue to monitor it with video and audio surveillance. I was coming down north on this road here, and I heard some noise screaming back in here. And the noise that was coming from that creature is what well, was on the recorder here. We saw it coming up over that ridge up there. It made the most horrible sound I'd ever heard in my life. I think Bigfoot is an animal that we already know from the fossil record. This is a cast of the lower jaw of a what we call the Gigantopithecus. In this region, the caves have produced um, teeth of a primate, Gigantopithecus, which may have gone extinct as recently as 10,000 years ago. That was just a bit too much like us for our own comfort. 
but it's a fair presumption that this was an erect bipedal animal, standing perhaps eight feet tall, weighing about 800 pounds, and being uh, presumably covered with hair. And uh, this, of course, is an exact description of the living Sasquatch. Excerpt, Rachel Glenn's Field Journal, August 6, 2005. Rachel disabled more traps near the Northeast Basin. Cable snares, identical settings. She suspected it to be the work of the same poacher. She also filed these photographs, unable to identify the subject as the images were indiscernible. fired today at an area park ranger. The poacher turned his gun on the officer and fired four to six rounds. There are very stiff penalties for poaching in this state very high rewards for those who catch poachers in the act. Rachel's Journal, August 9th. Destroyed numerous traps. Anxious behavior in bears near her post attributed to mysterious noises from the forest admits she herself is disturbed by the strange sounds. There's something out there, she writes. Something appears to have tampered with camera seven. This camera is nine feet off the ground. It does not look like the work of a bear here. What is this? Some sort of fur. I know what bear look like, what they smell like, what they sound like. This was not a bear. I was terrified. There was no doubt about it. They were unlike anything that I had ever seen or even imagined before. As I got a little bit closer, I noticed it was walking very much like a human. And the height had to have been maybe seven and a half feet tall. 20 years of outdoor experience in Alaska. I'm not afraid to be out in the woods. What I saw was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. We have vial of fur from tree under camera seven. What the hell?
I saw this very tall, dark, hairy creature, i.e. Bigfoot, peer its head out from behind the tree. I believe it was curious. Of all the great apes, the gorilla is the largest species, and they're often described as intelligent. about that hair sample you sent in? But there's no chance of contamination on that, is there? Why do you ask? Turns out it's not a bear. It's more like a like a primate or something. Really? Yeah, they're, they're running more tests on it. I'll let you know if they find anything. But that's not the main reason I needed to speak with you. Listen, well, we got some info about hostile poachers up there. Right now, you're the only one I got covering that entire area. I might need to get you out of there sooner than we planned. Well, just uh, keep me informed. Let me know what you find out. All right, Rachel. I'll get back to you shortly. Bye. August 13th, Rachel received word that help was on the way, but she would have to hold out for another 36 hours before it arrived. She packed her bags, then spent the day gathering final footage of her bears. There was only one entry in her journal for this day, a question, where are you? Looking for me? You're pretty and smart. Pervert. You quit destroying my traps, maybe I'll leave you alone. Give me the camera. You want this? Come get it. Give me the camera. Down on the ground. August 14th, after viewing footage on the poacher's camcorder, Rachel now felt even more vulnerable. Where she had always felt safe in the secluded woods, fear now replaced that emotion. I need help now, she writes. Rachel continued to study the photographic evidence of the mysterious animal, which appeared to be drawing closer to her. One of her last entries reads, it almost seems like he is keeping a watchful eye on me. We see a lot of instances from zoos and also in the wild, these uh, social bonds that are established between a uh, human and the primate species they study. They, uh... 
Today is August 14th. I've had quite a day. Had an earlier encounter with a poacher. I will shoot you! I am not afraid to shoot you! August 14th. There's been some sort of a, an attack. Oh God. Oh God. Rachel Glenn's final report included an encouraging assessment of a now thriving black bear population. An incident report was included for the hunter who was killed by his own traps. There was no further mention of any new or strange species in the area. Every year, more Bigfoot sightings are reported across the world. There is no final conclusion as to whether he is a benevolent soul or a monster of the woods. As with so many other hidden creatures, we are left to wonder, do they live among us? like it before, it had a really long neck. <laughs> there are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Come on! No. If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? <laughs> Into a realm where fact meets fiction. Science meets okay. legend. Where nightmares come to life. <laughs> 
Lost Tapes, Monster of Monterey. In 2007, Sharon Novak, a 26-year-old journalist and outdoor enthusiast, embarked on the most dangerous assignment of her career, a solo around-the-world sailing trip. Her boat was rigged with cameras, enabling her to broadcast the expedition live on the magazine's website. Alone at sea for three months, Sharon overcame many difficult challenges. But in the home stretch of her trip, she faced one final terrifying obstacle. These are her tapes. Good morning. It's day 171, my final day. I'm gonna be pulling into Monterey, and so looking forward to it. But um, I should be coming in in a couple of hours. Uh, the wind has uh, pretty much died down, and I think it'll pick it up, pick up later. And thank you guys, thank you for everybody who had kept in touch with me, kept me company on this long journey. It meant everything. But I'm going to be seeing you very soon, and cheers. <laughs> the winds can be fierce, the sea can be high, and the air can be really cold. It's a very lonely experience out there. It's like driving your car at 100 miles an hour with your eyes closed. It's, uh, it's that tense. Hello. Hello. Sharon. Sharon, hey, how are you? Good morning. Hello, hello. Sanskrit? No. Uh, uh, <laughs> how are you feeling today? You okay? I'm tired. Yeah. Have you given any thought to where you want to go for your first meal back? Anything but seafood, that's all I'm saying. Anything but seafood. <laughs> all right, done. But your, uh, your fan base and your paparazzi are going to wait outside. Fan base? I cannot wait till you get back here. You see how many people I just taken to your trip. It's Seriously? amazing. Yeah, it's tremendous. I'm so glad it's all worth it. It's definitely. All right, I better get going. A couple more hours. Give me a kiss. Mwah. See you soon. All right. Bye. in the sea that we have yet to discover. We have only seen a small portion of what's out there. Vessel Artemis, please repeat the nature of your distress and your location.
Vessel Kahuna, this is the vessel Artemis. Please repeat the nature of your distress and your location. Got a distress call. <clears throat> I'm gonna motor up, take down my sails, check things out. Okay, so uh, I've reefed my sails and I'm gonna go check out this distress call. Um, hopefully, it'll be nothing. Hopefully, I'll be back on schedule. Uh, Did you hear? Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I gotta check it out because I, I don't know what else to do, okay? I know. I okay. understand. All right. <laughs> Are you okay? What yeah, I just hit something. I, my engine died. I gotta go check it out, okay? Under the boat and check it out. No, 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 no. Just give him a minute. Charles, I'll be fine. Sharon, I know you can Goodbye, be Goodbye, Charles. Preparing to investigate the seized engine, Sharon clipped an underwater video camera to her vest in order to broadcast the findings to her viewers. Then she tethered herself to the boat before descending into the water. says they've done everything they can think of. They've gone 150 miles out to sea and 500 miles up and down the coast, but they have found no sign of the missing sailor. Okay, so I'm responding to a distress call that just came in about a few minutes ago. It's kind of a put back in the schedule, but I think that I am the only vessel within range, so I feel like it's my responsibility to check it out. And I am slowly approaching. I don't see anybody on that. Take a look. I still don't see anybody. This 
odd black and white Coast Guard video shows the 34 foot long boat, the engine still running, and the lines holding traps still hanging over the side. Anybody on this boat? Oh my God! What? Oh my God! That looks like blood. There looks like there's blood all over the side of this boat. Ahoy! Okay, nobody is responding. I'm going to call the coast. There's blood all over the place. This is not look good. U.S. Coast Guard, this is the sailing vessel Artemis. Come back. U.S. Coast Guard, this is the sailing vessel Artemis. Come back. Coast Guard, this is the sailing vessel Artemis. Come back. Okay, you know, I just don't know what happened there, but something horrible, but this is the Coast Guard's responsibility, and I just don't... Ah! Awesome. several times and I don't know what happened there. There's stuff all over the side, there's blood. I don't see anyone on there. I called out, something horrible happened. My boat got hit again, my engine's completely out. I, okay. I'm i not going back in that water again. I'm no, 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 you're not. Okay, good, call the Coast Guard. I called the Coast Guard, nobody is responding. Okay, um. You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna hoist my sails. I'm just gonna get out of here. I can't stay here. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. I'm gonna call the Coast Guard. Sharon, take a deep breath. Pull yourself up. Help me! 
Though the local Coast Guard performed an extensive grid search of the area, they were unable to locate Sharon Novak, nor recover her body. They did, however, find her underwater camera, which unfortunately didn't reveal the mysteries of her disappearance. Instead, we are left to wonder, do they live among us? Then it stood up, and I didn't know what to think, and then it disappeared behind the bushes. It was over six foot tall, and had a weird face. And yes, they're out there. They've been out there forever, and the uh, best thing for everybody to do is just to leave it alone. It was walking on two legs. My daddy's seen it. He tracked it. My uncles have seen it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This scared the hell out of me. Creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, Come on. No. if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend. Where nightmares come to life. Oh my God. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Swamp Creature. In late 2006, 
Dr. Diane Chasney, a professor from Tulane University, ventured into the remote reaches of Louisiana's Honey Island Swamp to survey the ecological damage in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. What are you doing? Just checking my camera trap. She was accompanied by her nephew, Ethan, who, though unfamiliar with the swamp, was willing to act as her research assistant and document their findings. What are you going to be trapping? <laughs> Hopefully a gator, if I'm lucky. Dr. Chasney's primary focus was centered on the diminishing local alligator population that have been forced into surrounding areas in search of food. It has sensors that detect motion, so whatever comes through here, it'll set it off, and hopefully, we're gonna get a good image. But what they eventually encountered was more startling and dangerous than anything her research had prepared them for. That should do it. These are their tapes. Okay, well, give me that. If you could go down there and play gator for me. What do you mean? I need to test its sensitivity, and for that I'm gonna need you. So what do I do? Down. You're serious? Very serious. <laughs> God, I did not sign up for this. Very oh. menacing. <laughs> How do I look? I'm ready for my close-up. Very terrifying. All right. <laughs> Ethan. Did it work? Huh? Oh! oh my god! Oh my god! Just stay calm. Stay calm. It's got my backpack! Well, now's your last chance to go get it. This is not the time for jokes. That backpack has the GPS, it has the compass, it has the maps. How are we gonna find our way out of here now? Well. We're just gonna have to do it old school. Great. I knew I should have gone to Boy Scouts. What I saw scared the life out of me. I was face to face with, I didn't know if it was man or beast. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, it scared the hell out of me. When it looks human, but you're not quite sure it's human, you don't know whether to shoot or run back to the house. It's not a it, it's a them and they. Ethan, slow down. <sighs> We're gonna miss things. Sorry. Look, snake skins. What kind of snake? Looks like a diamondback water. Is it poisonous? No, they are very aggressive. But people often mistake them for rattlesnakes. Huh. They're not poisonous though. You think we should be moving on? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm just gonna make a couple notes. You okay? Yeah, I thought I, I thought I heard something. It's Friday. Careful. Uh, it's midday. We're in the middle of the Louisiana swamp, and we are hopelessly lost. We're not lost, Ethan. Really? How do you know? Look. Okay. Let's just keep going in this direction. We're good. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. What is it? These are our footprints. That's impossible. No, no. These are our footprints from before. <laughs> Look, it's, it's a, the, 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 the water diamond thing that you, you saw before. It's a snake. Oh, no. If a man goes out into the swamp and doesn't want to be found, you can't even find him, and he's, he's not living there. I mean, you take something that's been out there all this time. People say there's no panthers out there. Well, I've seen one myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
and he was so big he could have put his paws on my shoulder and whipped me on top of the head. Yeah, they got stuff out there. And if I didn't want to be found, they're not going to find me. It's going to be walking in circles for like two hours. We just need to find the river, and the river's going to lead us out of here. It's going to be fine. Let's get up. Let's get going. Let's find the river. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? I don't think anybody's here. Hey, Doc. They're probably here. Hey, it's a boat. We could use this. We could get out of here. We could take this up the river. Ethan, we're not taking someone's boat. That's stealing. They've got to be nearby. We don't know when they're going to be back. I can tell if someone was here this morning. Oh, man. If we just follow the river. Ethan! Hey, what? what? Y'all picked the wrong place to get lost in. We didn't touch anything. You call kicking my pot? That ain't touching? We're very, very sorry, sir. We meant no disrespect. We're just gonna go now. We're just gonna follow the river. You ain't getting out that way. Could you tell me the way out? I could. Lost in the remote swamp without a map or GPS for guidance, Dr. Chasney negotiated with local fisherman Bud Ray. He would be their guide for the day, sharing his knowledge and expertise before boating them out of the area. We're now following this guy named Bud Ray. If we don't make it out of here alive, somebody happens to find these tapes. You know what happened to us. Coming? Or shall we leave you behind? Tell me about the alligators. Have you noticed a decrease in the local population? They're still out there. Not as much as they used to be, but they still there. Uh, the swamp full of things you ain't gonna see nowhere else. You respect it, it'll respect you. Still, there's certain things you don't do after 30 years. You don't go wandering off by yourself, and don't go out at night. Let's go. Let me show you something. Up in here? Uh-huh. Used to be a nest of alligator eggs. They all gone now. Huh. It's like you said, too much salt in the water from the hurricane. Just a shame. Come on, let's go. through here. I want you to bring your camera down there and shoot something. 
What the hell is that? I've never seen anything like it. Look at the depression of the heel. And there's no prints to either side. It's as if it was walking upright. That's impossible. What out here walks upright? Let's get back to the camp or we'll get dark. I just need a few more seconds. Get the damn pictures and let's get back to the camp. This would be a classic example of what's called the three-toe. The ones that live in swamps seem to produce this kind of track, and it obviously carries a bipedal creature. Don't you think it's time to start heading back? Nope. What do you mean? I told you, it's dark. You can't be going away after dark. Well, what do you suggest we do? Stay here. Uh, what? So that's very kind of you, but that's not necessary. We should... Unless y'all rather stay with them gators. Gator can smell a pretty woman before I can. Y'all ready for us for supper? Uh... Sure. With Bud Ray unwilling to go into the swamp after dark, Dr. Chasney and Ethan had no option but to spend the night at camp. These footprints. Never seen anything like it in my field manuals. And you never will. No offense, but pretty much everything has been put under the microscope at this point. You know, I remember a long time ago, all the old hunters used to talk about a creature out here called the Tainted Keetri. Lived deep in the bio, mostly kept to himself. But at night, he'd come out and hunt wild bull. Supposed to be part man, part alligator. There's no scientific basis for that. It's just the local version of the boogeyman, too. I don't know. There's noises out here I ain't never heard before. feel like there's something out here in these swamps just watching me but I leave it alone it leave me alone well at the very least it's a good story well y'all believe what you want to believe I'm going to bed coming y'all sleep over here I see y'all in the morning. What the hell do you think you're doing? What, what the hell do you think you're doing? Be quiet! I thought I heard something. Take this. If anything come in here, shoot it. What was that out there? 
Oh no. Preach it. Is he gone? I think so. Y'all okay? Yeah. Listen, guys, I was out before. I was walking and I stepped. I stepped on a nest of eggs. What? Why are you coming back? Shoot him! Shoot him! Shoot him again! Kill him! Is it gone? I don't see it. Maybe I didn't kill it. Oh God. Dr. Chasney brought the shell remains that the creature left behind back to the university lab to be analyzed. The results matched no known species. To this day, she continues her research in the Honey Island Swamp, determined to find more evidence to prove the existence of this strange creature. Ethan surprisingly returned to the swamp to produce a feature documentary based on his experiences. Bud Ray survived his injuries and continues his work as a fisherman in the Honey Island Swamp, but to this day, you will not venture into the bayou after dark. Like so many others who make this land their home, they are at once cautious and respectful of what the scientific world continues to deny. Do they live among us? science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Come on! If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction. Science meets legend. Where nightmares come to life. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Oklahoma Octopus. Hey, here we are. End of high school. Oklahoma native Sean Conklin graduated high school in 2008. To mark this milestone, he and a group of his classmates planned a celebration at a local lake. Knowing they would soon be parting ways for college, Sean documented the occasion with his camcorder, wanting to capture their final moments together. Unknown to him at the time, for some in this close-knit circle of friends, it would indeed be their final moments. These 
are his tapes. And despite my own little personal setback here, we're still gonna have a great time. We're still gonna have fun, enjoy this one last day together. Speak of the devils. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Smile. Oh, you brought a camera. <laughs> uh, of course I brought a camera. <laughs> Say hello, man. Let's go. How's it going, Tracy? <laughs> hey, guys, are we having a good time, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Yes, we are, Mr. Sean. Of course you're having a good time. All the time. Always. Always. <laughs> Always man. Tracy, having fun? Uh, <laughs> yes, no. man. You're a good time. Yeah, you know, it's kind of the past three weeks, it's been that time of the month, or, you know, I've been feminine. What are you talking about? Too much information. What? You just need to go out with your little tents. You're lighting up. Just lighten up. It's our last weekend. Sean, you got a great idea, buddy. It's called the camera wall! Ow! Yeah! Just you pay attention to the road, too, pal. Just do it. Man! It's that guy. I'm sorry. Maybe someone else should drive, huh? Oh, no, I'll, I'll drive. Second. Nobody's touching Anybody but Tyler? Anyone? Yeah, anyone. Anyone but Tyler. Okay, guys, I'm Hey, you guys, grab the cooler? Yeah? Oh, thanks, yeah. Right. Grab the stuff, let's do let's this. Go. Come on, Sean. Sean, let's go. Be a good day. You see, this is what I'm gonna miss. How is it, Tyler? First and everything. What? How is it? It's wonderful. We made it. It's cold. <laughs> Woo! Come on, baby. It's a car. Right? Come on, baby. Come get you. Come on, baby. Ruthie's doing it. Let's go. Sean, Sean, you missed. Get in there, Tracy. <laughs> it's good idea. I'm just kidding. It's cool. I will later. Don't get I won't. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna splash. Oh, come on, sweetie. See, come on. You know. Guys, guys. Yeah. Do you see that? See what? What's that? See what? See what, Sean? What? what? Sean. Ah, uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. Don't worry about it. Hey! Are you okay? Yeah, not fun. Woo! That's a good idea. I don't know. Maybe it was nothing. I guess I could check the tape. Come on, Sean! Yeah! Oh, I'm coming. It is feasible that these organisms could have adapted in fresh water. Adaptations are characteristics that help an organism survive in its environment as it changes. Sometime in the past, there are these coastal areas where a water was retreating, and perhaps that's how an octopus would be able to survive. And survive long enough to reproduce and eventually adapt, uh, it could become a freshwater species. Hey, Trace. Hey. What's going on? Check this out. What? Tyler? Woo! Where did you get that? What? Where'd you get that? You know, found it. 
Oh, you found, found it. Figured you wouldn't use it? <laughs> Thought we would. You're ridiculous. Yeah, I'll get it back. Relax. What's going on? All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. We'll grab the beer. We'll swim back to the platform. Watch the sunset. Who's in? I'm, I'm in. in. I'm in. And you two in? Let's yeah, do it. Okay. Cool. Let's get it. Yeah. You, take, yeah. you take the canoe since I you got the the, uh, the cast thing going on. All right. You saddle up. Wait, so we're yeah. swimming? Yeah, babe. I think it might be a little too hard for us yeah. to swim. Don't you I mean, I know it looks close, but. Hey, hey, you, yeah. It's okay, kind of just, just, take swim. Swim. just take the canoe. Just take the canoe. You want to take the canoe? Yeah, come in with me. Yeah. You can paddle. Keep, I don't think I can paddle yeah, anyway, so you. We'll get there. Are you guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. Can we get a picture of it? Okay, picture. Picture. Memories, baby. Excited about going to school? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm more excited if Tyler is coming or had even applied, but, you know. It's Tyler. Yeah. Does his own thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no regrets. No regrets. It's enough about me. Give me that camera. <laughs> what about you? Do you have any regrets? No? No. Not one. No. Sorry. Hey, Tyler. Y'all playing? Oh, the lovebirds over there. Oh, over there, baby. <laughs> what? Oh. Making fun of us? Yeah, making fun of you. Woo! Hey! Hey, guys! Hey, it's a... Yeah. Tyler. Uh -huh. Three seconds. Uh -huh. Three seconds before he comes back <laughs> up. <laughs> One, two, there, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Ah, you got us, Tyler. We were all so scared for you, yeah. It was funny, right? Yeah, it was hilarious. Oh, you're hysterical. Oh, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Unexplained deaths and drownings continue to plague the area. The exact cause of these tragedies remains unknown. Are you excited? What are they doing? Uh, Bruce and Ruth here are fooling around. <laughs> Tyler's missing in action. Probably off stealing another canoe. Maybe you drown. Oh, yeah. Funny, Tyler. Today, not just now, but for got weeks you've been acting like a bitch like this. Why? What's your problem with me, huh? Like a bitch. Yeah. Thank you, Tyler. Well, Thank you, Tyler. You're such a You know what? Just forget it. Forget it. I'm through. I'm through so with what? Through. You! I'm through with you. Fine. Fine. That's fine. That's how you want to be. What are you doing? Tyler, what are you doing? Hey, what I'm responsible you... for this canoe. I found it. You know what that means? I'm what? making sure you get back. Tyler, I have what? a cast on my arm. How do you expect me to get back to shore? Tyler, I can't Tyler. 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 And you had fears, you know? Tyler! Tyler! Bruce! 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 Are you okay? Come here. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you What are you? Hey, thanks, guys. That's all I can say. Thank you. Tyler! Have a good night. Thank you for... Tyler, That's come back! Hold them! Why Tyler. don't you go up? Huh? How are they gonna get back, Tyler? Seriously. Uh, just one more. Yeah. Sorry. 
Freaking... Don't worry, guy. He's gonna come back. He'll he'll come back. He'll be okay. He'll be he'll come back and like. Tyler. Come on, Tyler. Tyler. Tyler, come on. Tyler. Tyler, this isn't funny. Come on. Tyler. God. He's sick and tired of this. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Right here. No, there's, there's, oh, God. Don't, don't give in. He's Tyler. acting like an idiot. Bruce, he's not worth it. Come Bruce, on. Come Bruce, be careful, man. Bruce, come hey, on. come back. There's no way something happened to him. He could have, even if he's joking, he could have hit his head. Bruce. No. I don't see him, guys. Don't be so on the other yeah. side of the boat. Can you please God, just come out there? No! Bruce! No! Bruce! Bruce! No! Bruce! No! Bruce! Guys, there's something in the water, okay? What are you talking about? What do you I mean saw, there's something in the water? I saw something in the water earlier. I didn't want to say anything, okay? There's something in the water. It looks... What are you talking It looks like a tentacle. It looks like a tentacle, okay? What do you mean? I don't know. There's... I didn't want to say anything, okay? I thought I was just seeing stuff. I, okay. We're, guys, we got to figure out what we're going to do. Guys, we got... We have to figure out what we're going to do. How are we going to get back to shore? Help! 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 Somebody! Help! doing it for hours, nobody's gonna hear us. Oh. No, let's just, if we just, if we just stay here till tomorrow, we'll be fine. Somebody will find us and we'll be fine. Let's just stay in the middle of the raft and, and, and be really, really still. Let's just be really still. We have to try to swim to shore. I know you don't want to. We have to. We can't we stay here. Wait we can't we wait till morning. morning. Okay, that, that thing is out there. It's going to find us. If we stay here, we will die, okay? We have to make it to shore. I don't know if I can do this. No, it's gonna be okay, Tracy. I don't know Tracy. if I can do this. Tracy, I can't. I don't. <laughs> you have to trust me. I'm not gonna I leave you. I just do. I just do. Okay. I'll get in first. Be, be okay. careful. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You have to trust me. You have to. All right. All right. We have to go. All right. Come on. I'm gonna be right here. Take my hand. Take her. It's gonna be okay.
Having nearly drowned, Sean and Tracy were discovered at the shore suffering from exhaustion and shock. They were admitted to the local hospital where their medical chart noted unidentified blister-like wounds covering their limbs. The bodies of Tyler Schumann, Bruce Delroy, and Ruthie Semple were never recovered. To date, no one can say for sure if there is an octopus-like creature lurking in the depths of Oklahoma's lakes. But the extensive phenomena of lake monster sightings around the world provokes a daunting consideration. Do they live among us? Megalania is the largest lizard ever to be recorded. The tracks found by the teenagers were consistent with a reptile 30 feet long, far bigger than even the Komodo dragon. Creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend come to life. Oh my God. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Devil Dragon. In 2007, Tim Akron, an avid outdoorsman, set out to shoot the pilot episode of an extreme survival series. The premise of the show was to be dropped in remote locations, stranded for seven days in various harsh wilderness environments, with no food, no crew, and no contact with the outside world. Though skilled in outdoor survival techniques, Tim could not have anticipated the challenge that would confront him in the Australian rainforest. These are his tapes. Hey everyone and welcome to Stranded. I'm here in the Australian Outback. <laughs> no, you're not, Tim. Hey everyone, welcome to Stranded. I'm here in the Australian rainforest. Over the next week, I'm gonna be sharing this environment with some of the most dangerous animals, plants, reptiles, and downright scary creatures you will ever see. It's unbelievable. 
It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. And it's also why I'm only gonna take what I need for my shelter tonight. And what I need is a couple things. One, I need something to get me off the ground so we keep the venomous snakes and creepy crawlers away from me. Secondly, I need something to keep the rain off me. This stuff looks like it'll work just fine. You can smell it. The rain's coming. Oh man, okay, I'm just getting the final touches put on my shelter. It's crude, but it should work at least a little bit to keep the uh, some of the rain off me tonight. I can only say I'm in the rainforest, and it is hot, and it is really humid. And I'm starting to feel that it's been a while since I've had some food in my belly, so I'm gonna just get the final part of the shelter done, and then I'm gonna go out and start looking for some food before the sun goes down. The Komodo dragon is a very aggressive predator. It can get up to 10, 15 feet long. Scuba divers stranded on a remote island forced to fight off a man-eating Komodo dragon. One of the dragons apparently saw the divers as lunch. So check this out. I'm out looking for food, and I come across these bones. On first inspection, I thought they might be animal bones, but they're definitely human. We know there are a lot of predators out here. Saltwater croc, for one, is huge. And maybe a feral pig. Maybe a feral pig. How's that? All right, I'm going to do that again. Yeah, one more time. All right, so check this out. What the hell? Looks like one of our jungle friends. That's my camera over. All right, I'm gonna reset and do that again. Remember, one of the things that Aborigines used to do is they would look for fallen tree bark, tree stumps. And underneath that tree bark is where witchetty grubs hang out, and that's what I'm looking for right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be pulling some of this off here and see what we can do. And hopefully, ah, and we found the jackpot. So basically I'm gonna take one of these guys here. It's cute. I don't know, let's give it a shot. You know, it's kind of juicy. It's kind of like, uh, tastes like chicken and almonds. So, we got a nice little dinner here, and there's a good source of protein in these guys right here. They're not really that good. sunlight left. I want to show you an old Aboriginal hunting trick. Very simply, put some sap on the end of a stick. Stick it in a hole that you think belongs to a nocturnal animal. Rub it around. If hair comes back out, it, it's stuck in the sap. If hair comes back out, it's stuck in the sap. And we know there's an animal in there. Right. 
so I'm just gonna stick it in there. Let's see what I can find. Monitor lizards I do not kill their prey with their first bite. And they have a cocktail of potent bacteria in their mouth, which infects the surface of the wound and causes its prey to eventually die if they don't get eaten right away. Something definitely bit me. I'm gonna, uh... I'm gonna go take care of this. It was a fossil fish which had disappeared when the dinosaurs did. And then in 1938, suddenly this one was crawled off of South Africa. And it was just like finding a dinosaur uh, out in the forest someplace. I think it certainly opens the possibility of all types of monsters that might someday pop up. Having tended to his wound, Tim attempted to keep himself dry and warm for the night ahead. The importance of a fire. It's tantamount. Not only will the smoke and the flame help keep away some of the snakes and the creepy crawlers, but it'll keep me warm. And right now I'm soaked to the bone. I thought I'd let you see what the middle of the night in the rainforest looks like. It's basically been raining hard for about three hours. I think there's something that just keeps walking around outside. It's, uh, it's morning day two. First thing I notice is that I feel sick. Which is not what you want to feel when you're stranded. My arm is killing me. Uh, that thing that bit me yesterday. I have got a severe infection. That looks like some kind of blood poisoning to me. Which means I need to... I need to get to a village. I think I remember this one about five miles north of here. Which I'm gonna try to get to. I'm gonna grab my stuff on my camera and get the hell out of here. Just making my way out of the shelter. Just trying to head new to north. Trying to find that village because this infection in my arm is really starting to be a problem. I don't know if you saw that, but that was that was 
huge. Something just rustled through those plants there. And it was definitely not a crocodile. As Tim tried to find his way back to civilization, it became increasingly clear that he was being stalked. It's been almost two hours since I left this morning. I, I normally wouldn't wouldn't be moving with an infection like this because you want to try to stay stationary about with this thing stalking me. And if this infection gets up to my heart. <laughs> the village, but my shoulder is killing me. Take a look and see how this infection's doing. Oh god, it's definitely spreading. I gotta keep going, because I'm not gonna survive out here another night. With the poison coursing through his body, Tim became increasingly weary and disoriented. Catherine. <laughs> it's not how I expected it. <sighs> you tell Maria that I love her. <sighs> you take care of her.
Tim Akron's body was never found. However, his camera equipment was recovered by Aboriginal trail guides less than a quarter mile from their village. DNA testing of saliva found on his equipment matched no known reptile species. And so we are left to wonder, do they live among us? Creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend where nightmares come to life. Oh my God. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Cave Demons. In the winter of 2001, U.S. Special Forces led an intense bombing campaign of the Tora Bora cave system. In its aftermath, the military implemented a sophisticated communication system to track enemy movements. But something deep inside the caves was interfering with their surveillance. With his discharge only days away, Marine Sergeant Carlos Ramos was teamed with Corporals Latrell Wade and Derek Sawyer to complete a very dangerous assignment. This is crap. What's this all about, Ramos? No idea. Hey, focus, focus. So at ease and gather around. Their mission to discover and destroy whatever was jamming those signals. These are their tapes. Any questions? No, no gunning! Gun Move out and draw fire. Hey, babe. Yeah, I should be on a plane back in about three days. I just gotta go and take care of some things before that, but uh, everything should be fine, and I should be back home with you guys soon. Anyway, I do love you, and I can't wait to see you. I love you, uh. too. I love you. <laughs> hey, hon. Look who I brought to show you. He's getting huge, isn't he? He's enormous. He misses you a lot, and so do I, OK? So can you hurry up and come home for us? Huh? Say hi. Say hi to AJ. Say hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Let's do this, lady, so I can go home, baby. Look at you, you're already home. <laughs> Laughing your ass off. <laughs> you guys gotta come visit me in Chicago. You I'm promise that? Uh, yeah. Uh, hell yeah, man. For three more days, I'm still your Sarge. Unit one, unit one, this is remote command. Okay, gentlemen, I'm reading you all three at the mouth of the cave. Uh, let's do a quick head check for video, over. 
Ramos. Wade. Sawyer. Okay, all systems go. I've got you all on the monitor. I don't know how deep these caves are, but as far as I know, hiding in there, and your feet. Never stop looking at the ground. There's line mines everywhere. Coalition forces are actively pursuing Taliban troops believed to be retreating into the caves at Tora Bora. Let's take this serious. Let's do this. This is our last mission together. All right, you right? one, you're right. good to go. Go ahead and enter the cave and proceed as ordered. Uh, 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 Unit one, proceed down chamber three. You've got a straightaway for about 40, 50 feet over. Do you see anything up there? <laughs> no. Sure. Do you hear that? What was that? There's bats in here. Hey, bats, man. Sergeant Carlos Ramos, along with Corporals Wade and Sawyer, continued their mission inside the dangerous Tora Bora Cave, searching for the source of the sonar signals that were causing the interference of their communications. Unit 1, continue on your current coordinates. This is creepy, man. Are you right back there, Sawyer? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing Good. All right. That's nasty smell, man. Absolutely reeks down here. Oh man, what is that? What happened? What? That's guano, man. What is that? Bad. I got a signal. This way. Echo location ability of the bats evolve with the need to hunt in total darkness. Forget about the damn bats. I don't like bats, man. Are you scared of bats? Yeah, I'm scared of bats. Gotta be bats. <laughs> come on, man. Don't mess with me like that. Oh, sorry. Is there anything you're not afraid of, man? No, come on, man. I joined the Marines to kill terrorists, not deal with bats. I'm afraid of bats. You're afraid of bats? Might as well you. Oh! Showing weights, Gord. 
coordinates 15 to 20 feet below your current position. Unit 1, respond. Unit 1, please respond. Hey, what the hell's going on? You alright? You alright? Wait, are you okay? Wait, where are you, man? Wait, can you hear me? Talk to me. Can you hear me? Wait, can you hear us? Wait. Yeah. Are you okay, Wade? No. I think I, I think I broke my back. We're coming right there, Wade. We'll be right there. Hold tight. Something is down here. Something is down here with me. In the midst of their mission, Corporal Wade had fallen prey to an explosive booby trap. The ground beneath him gave way, and he plunged more than a dozen feet down to a lower chamber. Now cut off from radio communications, Ramos and Sawyer began their descent to assist their fellow soldier. Wade! Wade! We're coming down, Wade! God. You see him? No. I don't see anything down here. Hang in there, buddy! God. Oh, oh you all right? Good. You all right, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Wait! Ah. Wait, wait, look at me. Are you okay? Oh my god. Huh? You okay? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Huh, yeah. Some, some, something is down here with us. Okay, wait, listen to me. What's down here? <laughs> something is down here. Wait, listen to What'd me. What'd you see, Wade? Hey, hold on, man. Listen to me. Everything's okay. You're seeing things. You're back. like a lady. Look, there's a woman. Okay. Hey, you saw a woman? Sawyer! You said he saw a woman! Sh shut up! There's a woman Don't down here in this podium! Listen to me! Do. Listen to me! Don't you understand? He's hallucinating, Nick! Get this up together! You want to leave your friend here? Do you? Well, neither do I. Listen to me. We are going to get him out of here, okay? But we need you right now. Can I count on you on that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Listen to me. Don't move. Your back might be broken. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting a signal. Forget about the signal. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sarge, come on. What are you... Do you want to come back down here? It's just around the corner. Let's go handle this. We'll leave Wade here, we'll come back and we'll get out of here. We'll never have to come back again. Wade, I'm gonna leave you just for a couple minutes, man. We gotta complete this mission, okay? okay. We gotta, we're gonna finish this and go home alive, all right? Hold on, okay? It'll be two minutes. It's just around this corner. We'll handle it, come back, and we're gonna drag you out of here, all right? Here's your weapon. You see anything? You shoot, okay? I don't like this one bit, Sarge. We're coming back for you. Don't leave me down here. Please. Don't leave me down here. Everything's gonna be okay, man. Rabies is a common disease that you find in wild carnivores. Come on. Everything's gonna be okay, man. We're almost going there. The signal's getting stronger. Just follow me. Just follow me, man. Are we close? Something is down here with me. What's 
Sen de. Sen de gelin de. Ne ağzı ver beni. Hayır dur bir hangi. Sen bir gelin de. Keep going. Let's follow the signal. We gotta do this, Sway. Sorry, Wade. Come on, follow me. So sorry. Stay frosty. Come on. It's the same noise as before. Signal's getting stronger. <laughs> Whatever it is is right next to us. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Mm. This thing's going crazy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> to hear from you and I haven't heard from you. Are you? I hope you're okay. I'm sure you're okay. I just, I get worried you haven't called and you haven't sent a message back. Please, just something. I know you're busy. 30 seconds. Okay. I've been going over in my head something that might have happened to you and I, please will you just leave me a message, okay? need to know you're okay. I'll be waiting for you. Okay. I love you. Nine hours after the encounter, a rescue team located Sergeant Ramos near the mouth of the cave. He suffered extensive blood loss, but survived the attack and was taken to a military hospital for treatment of a rare form of rabies. After several months of quarantine, he was reunited with his wife and child. The bodies of Corporals Wade and Sawyer were never recovered. The injuries sustained by Sergeant Ramos indicate that whatever attacked the three soldiers that night was much larger than any bat species known to humankind. The evidence prompts us to speculate. Do they live among us?
so I made her hissing sound, and then saw the Alma rising up into the air in front of me. It was a demon. Over the next 30 years, a string of other Alman sightings took place, and a legend was born. I saw a demon beast. A demon beast. Something knocked me down! There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, Come on. if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend, where nightmares come to life. Oh my God. Do you believe? Lost Tapes. Death Raptor. Jolene, hate to break up the B-roll, but you want to give me a hand with this, please? All right, give me the heavy stuff, because I know you don't have it. <laughs> All right, it's right there. As a paranormal investigator, Peter Gray was accustomed to documenting mysterious phenomena like ghosts and otherworldly entities. He videotaped his cases for both serious study and popular television. Known for his steady nerves, he and his research partner, Jolene Shera, were summoned to a small California town in 2007 to investigate what was being reported as demonic activity. Witnesses believed a mysterious winged creature was haunting the local church and its parishioners. What ultimately proved to be their final case together was filmed, but never aired until now. These are their tapes. Hey, Peter, have you met this rector yet? Uh, no, just spoke on the phone. What'd you think about him? Uh, he sounded anxious. Huh. Yeah, it's a little how I feel. Wow. <laughs> you <wish. laughs> Hello? I don't know where he is. What are you doing here? Peter! You must not be here. No one. No one's safe. Did you see something? Yes, I saw a demon beast. Hazel! The summer of 1976 was a very strange one in England as a whole. There were UFO sightings, there were sightings of a sea monster. The whole county, or at least the area around Falmouth and southern Cornwall, seemed to go mad. And then in the middle of it, the Owl Man appeared. Just go and calm down, Hazel. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm Graham Bolton. Hi, Peter Gray. We spoke on the phone. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, for nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Graham Bolton interview, marker. Specifically, I'd like to hear more about the paranormal activity that people have been experiencing. Um, yes. Um, well, I've sort of had to think outside the box on this one because we really can't pursue this through normal church channels. Generally, our congregation has been encountering what they've described as a demonic presence for many years now. And they've described it as a large winged creature the size of a man with pointed ears and red glowing eyes. And usually when they've seen it, it's been hovering over the church or they've encountered it also in the forest outside the church. Hazel, who you met earlier, is one such example. She's quite frightened and confused. Suddenly, he was there. I, 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 and, and I, 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 I. Peter's interview with Hazel Van Leer was filled with disturbing moments. As a former resident of Mountain in Cornwall some 30 years prior, she experienced her own harrowing encounter, and the event had left a profound impression on her. She was convinced the creature had somehow followed her to the States. I think he's up here. Peter! 
basically all the witnesses describe the owl man as being a half man, a half owl, between four and five feet tall, covered in grey feathers, and basically man-like in shape. I run the coast path quite a lot down here and um, sometimes in the evenings I've heard some quite unusual noises coming from up in the canopy so I, I, I you know, can see how it would be feasible. I think probably people were just tripping or something at the time and hallucinating or something or, I don't know, it might be one of those urban legends, you know. Remind me again why we're doing this. <laughs> well. As far as I can tell, it's just a really big owl. He said he saw it hovering around the church. Owls live in belfries. There you go. Oh, God, it stinks up here. Look at all this. Oh, so disgusting. You get anything on oh, that? What is it? It's a dead bird. Oh, lovely. What was that, Peter? Ah, uh, just pigeons, as far as I can tell. Oh, God. Come on. Are we almost there? I think so. Oh. Hey, come here. Let's check this out. Oh, my God. What is that? Looks like a, um, a giant owl pellet. absorb all of the, the muscle and the soft material. Uh, however, the hair and bones are indigestible, and the owls will then regurgitate them in the form of owl pellets. Oftentimes, the entire skulls of their victims are preserved in the pellet, and you can see what kind of prey they were eating. Oh, that's gross. What uh, are you doing? Maybe we better see what's inside, right? Uh, I think that's a uh, rat skull. Oh. Oh God. This is weird. What? I think there's teeth in here. Like another rat? No. Oh my God. Oh. That, that's. Oh, this is not right. You getting that? Yeah, I got it. Peter and Jolene turned their findings over to local authorities as potential evidence of a crime or missing persons case. The next step in their investigation was to interview the family of Sue Ann Mills, a little girl who had also witnessed the mysterious creature. Hey, Peter. Check this out. She hasn't been the same ever since that night. She's not sleeping. When she sleeps, she has nightmares. That's not my Sue Ann. She used to be really happy. I believe that all these things that will one day be explained by laws of science, they are just laws of science we don't know yet. Sue Ann? Hi, my name's Peter. Can we speak to you for a moment? Sue Ann Mills interview. Would you tell me about what you saw in the woods the other night? I'd like to hear about it. It was a demon. Well, what makes you say that? By the way it made me feel. Do you think you could tell me how it made you feel? Hot. 
and scared. It was chasing me. It wanted to get me. It still wants to get me. It knows you're here to stop it. It's coming back to stop you. Despite grave concerns for the welfare of his clients, paranormal investigator Peter Gray determined the best chance for tracking the creature was to return Sue Ann to the site of her original encounter. Do you think she's gonna be okay? I think we gotta check out what she uh, says that she saw. The fact is she's the only one that knows where this spot is. Though she would be accompanied by her mother, Peter made every effort to ensure the little girl's safety. We have an assortment of gear with us. We'll be using an IR camera, which will help us capture images in the dark. And I will also be bringing along a thermal camera, which will help us detect any temperature fluctuations. Uh, additionally, we'll be running digital audio recorders, which will help us capture any EVP. Okay, guys, are you ready to do this? Let's go. Do you think this is it? What's wrong? I know, I just feel kind of strange. What's up? What's up? I don't know, I just like, like, like lightheaded or something. You gonna be all right? Yeah, I'm not scared. I'm just, it just feels weird. All right, well, let's keep it. moving. Come on. This is where I saw it. This what? is it. Here? That's the tree it was in. Over there. Well, I'm not picking anything up on the IR. What about on your thermal? Yeah, let's give it a try. Ah, oh, nothing. Oh. Sue Ann, you feeling okay? Hot. So are you. What was that? Oh, Anybody see it? That's, no. the, that's no. the thing! That's the thing! That's the thing I heard! I got nothing here. I don't see I can't see anything on this thing. Jolene, let's get some audio of this, please. Okay, let me grab you. <laughs> Jolene. Somebody knocked me down. Where? I didn't see anything. Something knocked me down! I'm there's, there's nothing you, there! I'm telling you, anything. something knocked me down! Jolene, I don't see anything! Look! Swan! Swan! Swan, where are you? Swan! Where'd she go? She, she was right here! Where'd she go? She was holding her hand! Swan! 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 Where did she let go of your hand? Swan! Swan! Here, she's here. You both got her. Oh, God. Oh, Swan, thank God. Oh, are you okay? It knows you're here to stop it. We have to go. We have to go now. I feel dizzy. All right, come on. Let's okay. move back this way, Julie. Oh, All right, Swan, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. you're okay. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Jolene, come on! Ah. Come on, now, yeah, move! Oh. 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 Come on, hurry up! Oh. 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 Come on, get up, get up! It has been suggested that the Owlman is a manifestation of a Phoenician god. The Phoenicians used to practice human sacrifice of children.
because she's young and vulnerable, and so is an older woman. Hazel, where are you going? Hazel, Hazel where are you no. going? Get up no. here. No. Oh, my God! Oh, my God, Hazel! The following morning, Peter Gray surrendered his tapes and evidence to local authorities so that they could complete their own inquiry. Shaken by the experience, Peter and Jolene have suspended all future investigations indefinitely. Hazel Van Leer has not been seen again since that night, nor has her body been located. Whether or not this strange phenomenon had indeed followed her here from her native Cornwall will probably never be established. Sue Ann Mills has recovered and is now enrolled in the fifth grade. Though no further sightings have been recorded since this investigation, Unidentified sounds are still reported from the woods near the church. Ghostly echoes, which could be figments of our collective imaginations, or evidence of a larger mystery. Do they live among us? They tied one end of a rope to its neck and the other end to a tree. The offending pest turned out to be a 22 foot reticulated python. The cause of death was by asphyxiation around the neck and chest. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend. 
where nightmares come to life. <laughs> Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Megaconda. Okay. Okay, you got everything? Yeah, we got it. Okay, you got everything. Turn it on, turn the camera on. Okay. In the summer of 2008, avid animal rights activists Scott Sumner and Evan Metcalf set out to investigate evidence of illegal animal trading by a local textile merchant. This is Scott Sumner. Dude, the blanket. For, uh, Get the blanket off. Good idea. Yeah, it looks better. Little did they know that the danger they were about to face inside the urban warehouse was far greater than anything they might have encountered in the wild. These are their tapes. Okay, you ready? Yeah. This is Scott Sumner, reporting for Animal Exploitation Response League News. We are standing in front of Tobar Limited, a company that claims to be working with textiles from around the world. However, we found information that shows that they may be involved with illegal exotic animal trade. We believe their owner, Ken Tobar, is using international connections and the internet to sell these products online. Now, we at AERL have been trying to contact them repeatedly, but have been ignored. So now myself and my fellow activist, Evan, are going to be taking matters into our own hands and entering the warehouse to find some sort of evidence to support these illegal activities. And we are going to shut this place down and get Ken Tobar behind bars. Is it good? Yeah. Okay, how'd it look? Yeah, we look good. Right, what do you mean, take these matters into our own hands? Well, what do you think we're going to do? we got to get in there. Wait, we're not going over the... We're not going over the wires. Well, do you got a key, Evan? Because otherwise it's really not an option. Determined to put an end to the atrocities they suspected Mr. Tobar of perpetrating, armed with only a crowbar and a video camera, Scott and Evan decided to take the law into their own hands. Come on, I don't think I can do this. What? Dude, we've been working on this for months. You can't just back out on me now. No, I don't think I can get over the fence. Yeah, you can. Come on, man. This isn't that hard. Come on, put your hands up there. Unbeknownst to Scott and Evan, retired police officer Larry Johnson was patrolling the grounds with his guard dog, Bishop. Get this, get this. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Larry suspected that Ken Tobar, the warehouse owner, was involved in black market activities, but knew better than to question his volatile boss. However, Inside the warehouse, there was one particular crate that made Larry and Bishop increasingly uneasy. Come on! You in this crazy box, boy! What is all this stuff? Honestly, I have no idea. Looks like it's a bust. Oh, 
Oh, come on, man. I know it's around right here somewhere. Whoa, what's that? Those are heat lamps. Bingo. See these? These are definitely not from the United States. <laughs> it's in there. Hey. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> okay. Okay, we got it. You got it all on film, right? Yeah. Hey, let's do a segment. Let's get out of here. Okay. You ready? Go. We've definitely confirmed that Tobar Limited is involved in far more than textiles. We're finding exotic lizards, snakes, live animal imports. <laughs> Frankly, we found a lot more evidence than we ever expected to find here. Let's get out of here. Oh, oh back, back. Gate, please, sir. Sir, I'm a reporter for AERL News. Yes. I'm sorry, sir. We are, we are investigating Tobar We're just Limited. Leaving. We're just leaving. Just let us finish our segment. Get out of here. Let's just go, Scott. No, just wait. All right? If you don't get Sir? out of here, I'm calling the police. Go ahead. Call the police, by I'm all means. Hey, I'll police. call them for you. Don't please, by all him. means. What, what do you think they'll think of all these exotic animals you have here? Please. Yeah. Man, hey. I'm gonna give you one more While time. we're here, get Evan, out. on him, on Put him. Put the camera down. Put the Sir, camera down. Sir, Whoa. Who else you got in here? No what one. That? What was that? Give me a tape. Evan, Evan, you got back there. Do not give him that tape, Evan. I'll take him the tape. Okay, one minute. I'll give you the tape. I'm giving him the tape. Hi. Here. This is your last chance. Get the hell up out of here. Yeah, let's just, no, let's just go. Larry reluctantly left Scott and Evan alone in order to investigate the mysterious noise coming from the other end of the warehouse. For how many months and we just lost everything we Dude, had? Dude, calm down. Oh my God. I have another tape. I was just saying that for him. Don't freak out. You have another tape? Of course I have another tape. I love you. Let's just shoot everything one more time and we'll get out of here, okay? Okay. Come here, come here. Come on, come on. Get these. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's get out of here. Come on. Do you remember how we got here? Yeah, right. Through that maze of freaky boxes. <laughs> Whatever it is, we don't want to piss it off. Okay. What the hell is in here? Stand up, let's get out of here, okay? okay. Here, grab a bag, yeah. That'll be good, that'll be okay. good. Ready? Yeah. A few moments ago, we uncovered that Tobar Limited is indeed involved in live animal trade. We found lizards, snakes. Unfortunately, we were confronted by the security guard who confiscated our tape. But digging even dirt deeper, we found that Tobar is involved with trading animal parts.
Here we have gallbladders. We have bear paws. We have elephant boots. The tragedy here is that these bear gallbladders, the active ingredient in them has been replicated by pharmaceutical companies. So there is absolutely no medical need for the killing of innocent bears for their gallbladders. We have enough information here to nail Ken Tobar to the wall. Okay, we're good. Let's right. get out of here. Let's get out. I can't wait. Oh, we came from over there. We came from over there. Okay, get this open. Okay, that's locked. Okay. All right, now he's over there. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. What? Come on, Evan. Come on. Dude. Mr. Tobar? Hey, this is Larry Johnson from the warehouse. Um, I was doing my rounds and I came across two guys and they were filming. They said they were reporters. But I mean, I want to tell you, I got the tape. Well, I got the tape and then I told him to get the hell up out of here. I mean, I don't know why they were, but more so, I'm really calling you to tell you. You, you know the big crate that's in the warehouse? Was well, open. And whatever was in there, it ain't in there anymore. Bishop! 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 There's a snake that big? I don't want to see it. No. With the crate now open and empty, it became even more imperative for Scott and Evan to quickly make their way out of the warehouse. Meanwhile, unaware of the danger surrounding him, Larry continued his search for Bishop, who had run off into the dark space. You're the one that just ran off. Bishop, what did this to you, boy? Gotta get out of here. I think this one's it. I'm pretty sure. There's just a oh, oh, God. Oh my God. It's a security guy's dog. Look at the, look at the blood smears. It was dragged here. What I think it was that this? security guard? No way. I think you're right. We gotta get the hell out of here. Dead end, come on, let's go. It's just a crate, hold on. Maybe I can see something. Uh, can you see uh, anything? I think I can see the crates from where we came in. Awesome. Uh, Should I yeah, get they're, right, they're right over here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, ah! Scott! 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> My friend, something got my friend. They got my dog too. Come on, we gotta go. Follow me. Come on, come on. Here's the door. Come on, come on. Go, go, go. I'm trying to just stop. 
Forced to leave the camera and tape behind, Evan and Larry made their escape just before owner Ken Tobar arrived at the warehouse to assess the situation. Johnson! Where the hell is that guy? That's my lucky day. The warehouse security cameras failed to capture what happened to Ken Tobar that night, but since then, he has not been seen. Evan and the security guard managed to survive their terrifying ordeal, and their testimony enabled the FBI to recover and seize numerous black market animals and animal parts. The giant anaconda Evan and Larry claimed to have seen that night was never found, leaving us all to wonder, does it live among us? right out of a horror movie. The wings must have been more than 25 feet. Creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, Come on. No. if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets okay. legend where nightmares come to life. Oh my God. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Thunderbird. Watch out. 
On November 16, 2007, Kevin Weller and his younger brother Cole snuck out of their suburban home to meet up with their friend Paxton Reed. They took their parents' video camera, planning to make a skateboarding video of themselves. The boys never could have anticipated that this relatively harmless act would have such terrifying consequences. These are their tapes. Oh, wait, hold on. He's coming? Yeah. No way, man. It's just supposed to be us two. If we're going to make this video, we got to take my little bro, man. He got mad skills. Nah, man. We're going to the ditch. The ditch? Man, he's scared. He's not scared, he's worried. He's a little kid. Man, I went there as a little kid. I wasn't even scared. Well, because you're Paxton. You're not scared of anything. It's gonna be all right, man. I got your back. You're watching over him, okay? Not me. You ain't got no problem with him bugging you. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Come on. Look, 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 look. Oh, hey, hold this, hold this, hold this, and I go through. All right, come on, man. Get through. Damn it, man. Yeah. It's gonna be so tight. Come on. Oh, what's wrong, man? Maybe I should just go home. No, no. man. Come on. Oh, what? no, look behind you, look behind you, look behind you. Oh, 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 my gosh. Oh. He doesn't play with you, man, come on. Oh, man. Here, get your boy. Let's have a fun time. Reluctantly, Cole followed Kevin and Paxton as they entered a restricted forest area on the outskirts of town. It's all right, man, we're gonna have some fun time, come on. We're gonna have fun. <laughs> yeah. Man, can't wait to get up there, it's dude. It's gonna be so sick. Dude, what you gonna bust out? That heart feels like I did on my downtown base. What you gonna do? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna do a tray foot revert, man. I swear. I swear. Oh, man. I hope Cole does that kick with mine. That'd be so that sick. That would be so tight, you know? Oh, all right, here it is, guys. <laughs> right down here. Dude, we've been walking forever. It's getting dark. How much longer? Chill, man. It's just up here. Relax. Hi. Dang. Okay, guys, the ditch is past the old power plant. Let's go. Where's Cole? Cole, what's the matter? Oh, the little baby scared of the dog. <laughs> huh? Is he gonna go off the quad, huh? Gonna go off the quad, little baby? No, I'm gonna go pee. Oh, <laughs> Come on, man, it's not best for Let's go. Forget it. Man, he's so scared. <laughs> no. Man, we shouldn't have brought him. We should have just been us two. That would have yeah. been so much better. Oh. What the heck was that? I do not know. Can you please tell me what that I know, was? I know it's a bird. No, nah, that's not a bird, man. That's not, that's not, that's something else, man. No. Oh my god. Dude, it's coming back. I know. I know. Oh my 
god. No, don't worry. Just stay down. Alright. You hear it again? Did you hear it? Oh my god, it's coming closer. Oh, serious. Did you see that bird, man? It was so crazy. It was it was gigantic. down and we're so serious Swear, right man. now. Just right above us. We had to duck down. You really? guys are trying to scare me. I'm really not scared. No, we're telling the truth. It almost swooped us up. Seriously. It was so crazy. Just... Oh my God, you baby, <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> hey guys, does it feel like it's raining or something? I feel that too. Wait. Oh, that's blood, dude. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God, what's that? Oh. Oh. What happened to it? What is that? Oh, 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 man, I stopped. Oh, 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 get up there. That's what I want. For Despite their strange encounter in the woods, with Cole following, Paxton and Kevin decided to continue on to their destination. Are you sure about this, Paxton? Yeah, man. It's cool. Come on, Cole. I'm scared. It's all right, man. I don't want to do this. Cool. I'm scared too. <laughs> Come on, man. You guys ever hear about the ghost stories? Stories? Yeah. Crazy stories, man. One day, these kids were skating up here, and some kid just fell. He slipped out, went all the way down the hill, and disappeared in a ditch. They went to go look for him. They couldn't even find him. Seriously? Come on. Let's go up there. Come on, go. Stay close. Having arrived at the ditch after their extensive trek through the deep woods, the boys were re-energized, 
finally able to do what they had set out to, film their skateboarding video. extent of Cole's injuries, Kevin determined that his brother could not move on his own. We gotta figure out a way to get him out of here, man. All right, hold on, hold on. All right, look. My dad has some bolt cutters, and he has this wagon, right? We could just go back, get the bolt cutters in the wagon, and then oh, cut the gate and put them in the wagon and get him out of here, man. That's a perfect plan. You can't. Dude, come on, man. That's a perfect plan. We gotta do it quickly before your parents get home. We'll be back, man. Yeah, come I on, promise man. you. Hurry up. Hurry up. I promise you. I'm sorry, girl. Come on, let's go. Don't leave me. Kevin. Kevin. We'll be back, girl. You, you did the stupidest thing today, man. You, man, you did a bonehead head prank. I didn't know he was going to get hurt like that. He's not just hurt, his leg is busted. He's more than hurt. We got to figure out a way to get him out of here, man. He's going to be scared, man. All right, hold on. I got a plan. How about just when we go home, when your parents get home, just tell them that you don't know what happened to him. You don't know where he went. You serious? Yes, man. Come You're on. being selfish right now. We can't leave my little brother in the woods dude, by himself with a broken leg. I can't get in trouble, dude. If I get in trouble one more time, it's over. This ain't about you, dude. Oh, oh. It's bad, man. Oh, man. See, we gotta go home, man. With those birds coming around. Oh, my God. Dude, we gotta get home. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Go, go. We gotta get home, man. Hello? Go. Go. Come, come down. Come down. Go. Go. Man, I heard him scream, man. We gotta get him. Come on. We gotta get home, man. No, we gotta get him. Dude, come on. Cole, we're back. What's Cole? You all right? Cole. Cole, man. Oh, oh my God. Are you?
You think he crawled home or something? How can he crawl home? His leg is broken. Man, I don't know. Man, oh my God, God where is he? Go! Go! Man, let's go home, man. This is we, freaky, dog. We, we gotta let's find go him, home. man. No. You gonna look over there or something? We gotta find him, man. Go! Oh my God, where is he? Go! Go! Oh my God. Go! Go! Paxson. Huh? Paxson. Did you find him? Is that, is that Coles? Yeah. Oh no. Cole Weller was found the following morning at the bottom of a freeway overpass, half a mile from the skateboard ditch. Though banged and bruised, miraculously, he was still alive. Cole has no recollection of the events that transpired that fateful night. What the boys witnessed, along with the numerous sightings of large winged creatures reported to inhabit our skies, leads us all to wonder, do they live among us? They're creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Come on. If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction. Science meets legend where nightmares come to life. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Skinwalker. Hey, Dad, look out! Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, did we hit her? Hey, baby. Andy Miller was two years into his political science degree when he made his first trip back home. He had intended for his parents to meet his new girlfriend, Jennifer, and introduce her to the ranching life in which he was raised. When she couldn't make the journey, he decided to videotape it for her. So yeah, this is home. This is a uh, driveway up to the ranch. It's kind of where I've spent my whole life. There's a uh, horses Andy. back there, house. Oh, this is my mom. Huh? What does mom do here at the ranch? 
Hey, Jen. I am looking forward to meeting you. I hope you come out and join us. It's beautiful out here. Um, what do I do? I uh, get up every day and I take care of the livestock, feeding, watering, I cook. He does pretty much everything. Yeah, I do. Well, there's Pops. For Andy, this return home was also an opportunity to reconnect with his father, Sam. A relationship strained when Andy opted for college rather than continue in the family business. Hey, Jen, how are you? So what's up? What you doing, Dad? Well, I've got a sheep that's probably gonna be having a baby here pretty soon. I need to go check on her. Oh wow! Yeah, that's right. Hey, uh, you know, I bet I bet Jen would enjoy seeing that, wouldn't wouldn't you, Jen? Yeah, that, that would be really interesting, Mr. Miller. What do you say, Dad? Mind if I tag along? Sure. Why not? Go. Great. Have a good time. Thanks. It'd be good for you guys to spend some time with you. Yeah, I know. Bye, sweetie. Bye, Teddy. So, see you, Mom. Bye. I'm gonna be you hungry. Have fun. Sam, be careful. All right, Daddy. But the mysterious events encountered during this seemingly commonplace visit went far beyond anything Andy knew or imagined about the land he considered home. And it was he who was introduced to a world he never knew existed. These are his tapes. Dad, where are we off to? What part of the ranch? Now uh, we gotta head up to the north part. That's where I've got the uh, sheep I was telling you about. We're having kind of a coyote problem, so hopefully it's gonna be a little bit safer. Uh, makes sense. Yeah. Listen, do me a favor while I'm driving here. You gotta put the camera down because it's a little distracting. Eh, no problem. According to Native American legend, Skinwalker is a person that transformed into an animal. The Skinwalker is particularly associated with the Navajo. The broad concept of the Skinwalker is of a shapeshifter a witch-like or sorcerer-like being that's able to change its shape. Like a werewolf, Skinwalker can transform from a human to an animal, any animal, but mostly a coyote or a wolf. Skinwalker, fear comes into your spirit, into your soul. You're afraid to even use his name. So, uh, I mean, how are things in general, yeah? Good? Yeah, they're fine. Not the same, son. How's school? It's good, I mean, you know, I really like my major. There's a lot of reservations out here. Could have been anybody. Native American people in general were not only living in a natural world, but for them it was a world also of the supernatural, and these worlds were interconnected. And it's in that context that we have to see the skinwalker. For native people, the skinwalker is considered a witch. The Navajo name is Yena Delushi. Yena Delushi means he who walks on all four legs. 
according to Native American mythology. One became a skinwalker by killing a member of one's own family. This was the initiation into the realm of being a skinwalker and acquires a special supernatural power of being able to take on the appearance of any animal that it may wish. He'll kill livestock, even kill humans, just to get their souls or their spirits. So, um, this is north end of the ranch. Jen, this is my backyard. Forget how beautiful it is back here. So you gotta go away to college where you can realize just how much you're gonna miss here in your own backyard? No, Dad, I, I'm going to college so I can, uh, you know, get an education and a good job. This is a good job. That's not what I meant. How far up here did you place them? Not too far. Oh, man. I don't know if you can see up there. We got, there's like eagle's nest, I think. Used to be anyways. Can't really. Oh, right there. Damn it. What? Tracks. That little coyote problem I told you about, we still have it. Damn it. Well, it only looks like they're going one way. Wait a minute. It looks like footprints. Sam. You hear that? Sam! The hell's that? According to Native American lore, when a skinwalker puts on his skin, he acquires the spirit and the power of that animal. By being supernatural creatures, the skinwalker has amazing powers and can escape pursuit and thwart man's efforts to track him down. The skinwalker mimics family member voices. It can sound like your wife, your neighbor, your child, anybody he wants to. He's a, a sort of man beast. He's a creature of our making. He's in our image. Sounds like mom. She might be trying to call me on the radio. Might be something going on. Let's go. Weird, it sounded like it was coming from over there. Is that her? The radio's not on. We gotta check on that sheep. I want you to stay behind me. How many uh, how many sheep have we lost this year? You gonna have that thing on all day? No. I lost too many. Where do you think you hit him? I don't know, son. Careful, son. I see him? I swear I saw him go down. Fur, Dad. Fur. You gotta be real close. I swear we had him right here. Got it. Another story is they vanish into thin air, but they really don't. What they're doing is shape-shifting 
and going in another form. If you see a coyote or a wolf, you wouldn't know it was a skinwalker. You have to catch it in its animal form so you know it is one. You can cage it, and if it shade shifts back to a human, then you can kill him. I mean, you ever seen anything like this? No, son, I have not. <laughs> Damn it! Go, go, go! I'll catch up, go! His father found inside the sheep's pen was a grisly sight. The mother had been slaughtered and its newborn lamb apparently stolen. The hell is that? So we gotta get home right now. Right now, let's go. Sensing that his wife may be in danger, Sam and his son made a quick break towards home. Let's go. Ah. Ah. Listen, take the gun. What? Go, go, go. I'll be right behind you. Go. Careful. Get in the truck. Okay. 
Andy Miller returned to school with far more questions than answers. Impacted by the mysterious events back home, he eventually switched his major field of study to Native American mythology. Sam and Caroline Miller's coyote problems ceased shortly after Andy's visit, but they still report eerie animal cries that echo across the night horizon. The meaning behind their experiences will be viewed differently from culture to culture based on differing belief systems. But the question for Andy's family is the same many of us share. Are these creatures confined strictly to realms of legend and superstition? Or do they live among us? Last night, a strange and eerie thing happened. He went right in the treetop. He was going real fast, straight ahead. Thick wings got around its head. I've never seen anything like that before. About that time, the news came on and showed the bridge had fell. And she scared to death of this bridge, and I said, why? And she said, I'm just afraid it's going to fall. And that was 13 days before the bridge fell. The eyelid snapped. The rest was a chain reaction. Now, improvised search parties are attempting to find if just what it is, no one is sure. All I caught was those red eyes. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend, where nightmares come to life. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Mothman. In 1967, following the collapse of the Silver Bridge over the Ohio River, the FBI brought in one man for questioning in connection to the disaster. Following hours of interrogation, as well as a review of his home movie footage, they were left with a mystery that extended far beyond their expectations. These are the tapes. Say much, does he? Mm. Shipped here today. Local authorities had him. Mm. Didn't get anything. Nothing. Huh? Caught him with that camera, though, right near the bridge. Yeah. Wonder why. Why don't you give me a minute with him? Let's see. Talk to me. Hi, Roy. How are you? I'm Agent Tom Williams. Some coffee or... Hmm. Yeah, it's a terrible tragedy. All those people died. We're just trying to find out what happened. were there, Roy. You 
you can help us. Just want to know why you were there and why you were filming. See, the thing is, Roy, that bridge crossed state lines and that puts it under federal jurisdiction. That's why I'm here. So if you can just tell me everything you saw and why you were filming, I can help you. Help me piece this together and I'll help you. This small, unassuming southern community has recently become the site of some rather unworldly reports. Three boys last night near Glen, West Virginia in Clay County witnessed what they describe as a weird and perhaps unearthly unidentified flying object. But perhaps the most intriguing of these reports surrounds the appearance of a mysterious moth-like creature. John, can you tell me what, what happened last night? We got around and we thought it was a car light. So we stopped the car and the thing came over the top of the car. I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, Mrs. Payne's daughter saw the uh, object actually land, didn't you? All of a sudden, it just, you know, just sort of sank right into the trees, you know, and it kind of moved around a little, and it looked like, you know, it's trying to get away. It can be seen from a distance within the treetops. However, search parties have been unable to find it. <sighs> Hi, Roy. I'm my partner, Carl Montgomery. Now, Roy, if you can just tell us what happened, what you saw. Roy, why'd you do it? Oh, you gotta give us something, Roy. How are things at home, Roy? How's the wife? How are things between you and Nancy? I love my wife. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just arrived at, at the site of a terrible tragedy. The devastation here is overwhelming. It's a horrible scene. There's total chaos and confusion as the rescue personnel are, are trying to help the many, many, many victims of this just awful situation. I know people said they saw it on the bridge before it fell. Some even blame Mothman for the collapse of their bridge, which killed 46 people. A giant moth-winged creature that many witnesses claim has descended upon this once quiet town. It happened about two weeks ago. It was late at night. My wife and I were sleeping. I thought I, I thought I heard something. So I, I went to the window and I, I, I saw something. I grabbed my camera and I, I pointed it out the window and I started filming. Roy? What's wrong? I, I thought I saw something. Well, honey, I'm sure it was just a bird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Come on, sweetie, come back to bed. It's late. Anyway, that, that, that was the first time I saw it. Saw so what, Roy? Look, I know it sounds crazy, but it was... It was this... this thing. It was huge. Like a... Like a giant bat or a, or a moth. It had, it had You have to believe me. I'm telling the truth. Why would I make this up? 
No, sir, and Turner was about halfway down that road when it was running beside of our car. After we got here that night, though, everything changed. We'd come up on us so quick, we didn't even know what hit us. Flew over some bushes. That's when I saw the wings. Big wings up around its head, between six and seven foot tall. We took off towards town. It kept right up with us. It was right over top of the car all the way down the road. It was just so red that the eyes drew my attention more than anything. The eyes are described as looking like two bright red bicycle reflectors. They are not glowing eyes, but they are shining eyes. It was not a color of red I've ever seen before. what it was that's what you've seen running around here is not some creature Nancy I saw it <laughs> the Mothman sightings begin at the TNT area it's an old World War II munitions area it still has lots of bunkers there where munitions were stored if you look at all the descriptions of Mothman, the large wings and these eyes shining very bright red. There's actually a creature that looks just like this, except it's not as big. The barred owl, very common in the TNT area, which just happens to be a wildlife preserve. <laughs> December 14th. I'm back here at the Silver Bridge. Over the past week or so, I've been drawn to this place. This is where I've seen multiple sightings of the creature. I don't know why, but I, I think it's trying to tell me something. I had this, this sick, feeling in my stomach. I don't know. On the day of the collapse, I... I just... I just knew I had to be down there. I just... I just had a feeling that... something bad was gonna happen. Something bad did happen. Why'd you kill all those people, Roy? Fire, police, and civil defense officials work around the clock in the search for victims. An incredible disaster which shocks the nation and touches hundreds of families with tragedy. Okay, Roy. Why don't you tell us again what happened that day? Are you serious? From the beginning. How many times do I have to tell the same story? There's nothing more. Please, Roy, from the beginning. I woke up in the morning. Red. And my wife came home from the market and we got in an argument. What was that about? Me spending so much time at the river. 
test. This creature. I can't take it anymore. This is important. Get some help, Roy. Nancy. I left the house. I had my camera with me, and I went down to the bridge. It's, it's, it's got to be six feet, seven feet tall. It has wings. It's, it's like a giant moth or, or, a, or a bat. It's there! There, there it was! Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, oh! Oh, oh my God. We'd be out driving. He'd be sitting along the road, just sitting there staring, like it was kind of wanting us to see it. Seemed like it knew where we were going to be. The collapse came at the heat of the evening rush hour while traffic was lined up bumper to bumper. Something just kept weighing on my shoulders, you know, not to go. Something will happen if you go. The quarter mile suspension bridge suddenly plunged 100 feet into the water with a tremendous roar. No reason for the collapse has yet been found. See, about that time the news came on and showed the bridge had fell. We would have been on that bridge when it fell. It's December 15th. All day, I, I've been seeing the creature like crazy. I've never seen it this much. I don't understand what's going on. Oh, my God. Let me see if I can get this on film. Oh, God, this is awful. Those people. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I am coming to you now from the site of what can only be termed as a disaster. At roughly 5 p.m., in the midst of the evening rush hour commute, the Silver Bridge inexplicably collapsed. Uh, from where I am standing right now, I can see several vehicles submerged in the Ohio River with a dozen or more so above badly mangled along the body of what is left of the bridge. Uh, there are countless people here in need of medical assistance. We have no idea how many fatalities there may be. The number will have to be quite large because the vehicles and the commuters were trapped in the river once they fell off of the bridge. Why'd you do it, Roy? Did you think Nancy was going to be on the bridge? Huh? All day, I I've been seeing the creature like crazy. Oh, my God. When you're working alone, why'd you do it, Roy? All you do is talk about this creature. The devastation here is overwhelming. It's a horrible scene. It's total chaos and confusion. This is important. Get some help, Roy! Nancy? Seems to be a commotion behind this lady. Help! But it, it looks like someone may be attempting a rescue. Can we get any closer on that? Yes. Oh, this is incredible. Is that what this is all about? Did you blow up that bridge so you could look like a hero? So your wife wouldn't think you were such a loser? woman, she said, she saw it too. She said it was trying to warn us. Following an extensive FBI investigation, no charges were brought against Roy Kirby. The cause of the bridge collapse was officially determined to be a structural flaw. Roy gratefully returned home to Nancy and vowed never to speak of the creature again. The FBI retained custody of his film reels. After the tragedy, there were no further sightings of the Mothman in the area. Some believe the creature was taken away by the military. However, in 2007, a Minnesota woman reported seeing a Mothman-like creature about a month before the August 1st I-35 bridge collapse in Minneapolis. And so we are left to wonder, does it live among us?
corrosive yellow saliva that acts like acid and kill its prey blasts of electricity. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend, where nightmares come to life. Do you believe? Lost Tapes. Death Worm. I'm so glad we did this. Yeah, I knew you would be. <laughs> you know, I gotta pop out the, the camera. You gotta document your loss. In the summer of 2008, two longtime friends, Greg Cole and Benton Davis, competed in a three day, 500 mile ATV race across the Gobi Desert. Extreme sports enthusiasts, Greg and Benton would push each other to new challenges each year. Greg was always game for the most dangerous adventures, while Benton, recently married, was being pressured to behave more responsibly. Neither could have foreseen the circumstances that would put an end to their adventures together. These are their tapes. How does it feel to be looking at my back end the whole time? <laughs> That's hey, not really true. That's I'll tell you really something. True. I got an idea since we are in last place. Yeah. How about this? I beat you, like I will, next year. We go to Everest. All right, fine. And if you win, which you won't, you name it. I want a second honeymoon. You and your me wife. Me and Lisa. Yes, me and Lisa, sponsored by you. How about that? Agreed, because it isn't going to happen, Lisa. And by the way, <laughs> I want you to look at your husband. No scratches, baby, no uh -huh. scratches. He's going to come home in one I'm piece. Safe. I, I promise. Really, I, I want you to know I'm really safe, OK? Mongolia contains one of the largest deserts on Earth, the, the Gobi Desert, which spans the entire southern part of the country. I'm so glad we're taping all of this. Ah, uh, look at look look at this, man. Oh, I'm amazed. This is just beautiful. I mean, how One more thing. Well, um, get a good look at my rear view. Wait, uh, you know what? No, 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 no. What? I don't know where we're going. Well, it's okay, man. I'm pretty sure the trail's just right over that dune right there, okay? Up there? Yeah. I know it's getting dark, but we'll find it, okay? 
Alright, alright. All right. We haven't seen. It's alright. Buddy. Uh, oh man, dude, we're lost. We're not lost. Oh, we missed the checkpoint. We missed. We missed we're not lost. We're just not completely sure where we are right now. <laughs> we should we should go back that no, no, way. No, no, we listen, came listen, this way. Listen, we should go, listen, we should go back that here, way. listen. Let's just pull off to one of these dunes. Sit down. Relax a bit. Light will come. We'll jump back on. We'll be in this in no time. Okay. Come on, man. You gotta trust me. All right, all right, I take man. care of you. This is me taking care of you. All right, man. All right, all right. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. All right. You tell you tell me where to where to all go. Right. We're just gonna pull over here. All right. All right. All right. It's a good spot as any. This is Greg getting us lost. We're not lost. Oh, you can't even admit it, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. It's a nice night. It'd be a nicer night if I was home in bed with Lisa. Come on, remember? We're having fun. This is fun. <laughs> Out in the middle of nowhere, lost. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Having a great time. Fun. Honey, I know what you're gonna say. I told you. I know. You told me. Hey, at least you got somebody at home worried about you, man. What is that? Been thinking about it lately a little bit. Really? I don't know. I don't buy it. Mr. I got a new girl every week. <laughs> All right, so maybe it wouldn't work. You know why? Because <laughs> I can't quit you. <laughs> Broke back, Sam. <laughs> oh, what the? I felt like something bit me. I'm serious. Oh, oh, what? What? It was something, man. I saw I saw something move right there. I, I, I lie to you not. I saw it. It's right there. What the f***? It might have been the thing that, that bit you. You sure this is a good spot? Oh man, I'm actually, I'm actually getting, getting to be pretty tired. I might close my eyes for a bit. All right, that's cool. Maybe I'll knock out. The sun will be up soon, right? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna find a trail again. All right. What's up, buddy? What's up? 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 Greg was attacked again during the night. This time, the creature emitted a corrosive acid that dissolved his suit 
and now is slowly eating through his leg. What is it? Oh, Bev, I don't. What I, is that? Great, 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 great. What is that? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Oh. What's that thing that bit me? Okay. It must have come back. Okay, I know, I know, I know. Let me, let me, uh. What? Oh! Oh, are you kidding me? All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm gonna get to my bike. My bike's gonna work. My bike's gonna work. Are you just stay, no, stay, stay right there, buddy. Yeah. All right. Okay, we, we got, we gotta go. Come on, come on. All right, come on, come on. Can you get up? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Come on, I gotta get you on the bike. Come on. Okay. Come on, I gotta get you on the bike. Come on. Come on, just stay like that. Do it. I'm gonna come on, I'm gonna get out of here. What's going on? Oh, it's dead, man. Oh, man. What do you mean it's dead? It's dead, it's dead. It's... We're out of gas. No. No. All right. All right, man. Oh, no. Um, we have to figure out where we are. All right, all right, all right. Right, you stay right here. You'll be all right. All right. What do you see? Um, oh, man, it's nothing. Uh, not for miles, man. I, I, oh, God. I could keep walking, but I don't, I don't want to leave you, man. So, wait, wait, wait. You feel that? The best known animal for having the ability to emit electric charge is the electric eel. They have several organs that can emit electric charge. Do you feel that? Yeah. It feels like. What the hell is that? It feels like my hair standing up. It feels like my hair. God, it was the same thing that got you, man. It looked like a big worm. Yellow slime all over the... Oh, it's all over the engine, man. It's all over the engine. I'm just going to stay here. No, man, you got to go. I'm just going to stay here. You have to go. Look, I can't walk. And you better go now while it's still dark out, while it's cool before the sun comes up. You have to go. Take the cameras so you have the light. Man, you have to go. I'm. I'll be back. I'm in Mount Everest. Ben. Huh? I'm sorry, man. And I'm sorry for Lisa, too. Go get help. I'll be right back. With Greg immobile, Benton understood that the only option was to leave his friend and somehow find help. Okay, baby. I'm gonna get out of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find my way. I know. 
I know I can get out of this. I know I can. I know. I can get home. I know I am. I can. I know I No, come on, no! 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 My name is Peyton Davis. Me and my friend, Gray Cole, we were bitten by these things in the sand. <laughs> Ken, big win today. Feels good. It's definitely windy out there, though. Yeah. It's blowing the front end around when you're coming off the tops of the berms. Dune's tough to read. Definitely blind spots everywhere. All in all, pretty good. I'm sure you've heard about the two riders that have yet to be found. Any thoughts about that? My heart goes out to them, but, you know, it's part of the game. We all know the dangers. Possibly they'll find them. They might find them a year from now, and maybe they'll never see them. When Greg and Benton failed to sign in at the next checkpoint, a search party was sent to look for them. Rescuers scoured the desert and finally did find Greg and Benton's ATVs, but they were never able to recover the bodies of the two men. Organizers of the race presumed that they got lost in the desert and died of heat exposure. They never investigated the strange burrows surrounding Greg and Benton's equipment. Thus, we are left to wonder, does it live among us?
They are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction, science meets legend, where nightmares come to life. Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Hellhound. Are you rolling? Yeah, it's on. Good, because I want to get every bit of this. In autumn of 2005, a group of college students led by Annabelle Lilith ventured to a local cemetery to videotape a segment for Annabelle's goth-themed website. The group, which included classmates Ophelia, Luna, and Severin, were all fascinated by the spirit world, but their grasp of such matters was amateur at best. Annabelle's intention was to film the initiation of a new member into their clique, fellow student Nora Kellerman, whom Annabelle had not yet met. So, what did you guys tell the wannabe about tonight? Nothing. Annabelle, we didn't say anything, just like you said. She's actually really very nice. She sits next to us in English. Mm -hmm. She's smart. She, she said she was in a group she was in, a group. in her old town before she moved okay, here. So what's her name? Nora. Nora. <laughs> That's cute. Well, We'll see if Nora the Explorer is the real deal, otherwise tonight's not going to be so fun for her. Though the others were unaware, Annabelle also intended, as a prank, to frighten the new girl during the ceremony. But her efforts would prove unnecessary. By the end of the night, there would be an abundance of fear, provided by a phenomenon outside their control and beyond their imaginations. These are their tapes. Oh, oh, look, this is her house right here. Oh. All right, well, I want to get all of this on tape, every bit. <laughs> looks like he's going on a date. <laughs> hi. Uh, hi. Um, I'm Steve. Well, Severin. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm my name is Steve, but I, I go by Severin. Uh, I'm Nora. I'm also known in the dark circles as Satan's concubine. Really? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh. Hey. Hi. It dress. Wow, thanks. Mm. Okay. Hey, guys, can we exchange MySpace pages later? You want to do this? You must be Annabelle. <laughs> so, Dora, are you ready? Um, it's Nora, and sure. Sounds like fun. <laughs> fun? Well, that's not quite the word I would have picked. <laughs> Don't let her pick you out, seriously. She's actually very nice. Hellhound is said to be a monster smelling of brimstone, a creature associated with a time in which people believed in devils and demons. But this is really necessary. It's part of the initiation. Neophytes are blind until they are given a gift to see. Oh, that's not exactly true. I mean, you know, there's no hardcore rule about protocol. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's from Aleister Crowley's Book of Magic. Well, do what I say shall be the law tonight. That's from my book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. god, what the hell was that? Where'd he go? It must have been 
us to turn away. the second largest cemetery in the state of Indiana. Sometimes upon peering inside of the mausoleum, you might see the dog's head tilt. In the early morning hours, you might see the figure of a dog strolling the grounds around the mausoleum. <laughs> I really don't think this blindfold Okay, watch your steps. I'll decide what's necessary and what isn't. Annabelle, this place is wicked creepy. Oh, you guys have nothing to fear. I mean, what better way to celebrate life than to be surrounded by death? As midnight approached, the group positioned an additional camera to capture what Annabelle claimed was an ancient initiation ritual. Unaware of her intention to frighten Nora, they gathered at the foot of a gravestone, and the ceremony began. Spirits of the somber night, those who preside over moon and stars, Hear our voices calling out to thee. Blessed be. Blessed be. Spirits, we appeal to thee. See us before you now. See this neophyte we present unto you tonight. Blessed be. Blessed be. Spirits, from the shadows we evoke thee. Rise, rise and see us so that we may commence. <sighs> Spirits, make your presence known. This is getting a little weird. Shh, let us be silent so that we may hear the spirits bless this rite with a sign of their presence. Sign, that's what we got. No, no. It was a dog. It ran away. This is a sign. Where did it go? Oh my god, you guys. Guys, guys, check. Guys, guys! This whole spot is. What is that? The Hellhound is associated with those places that we associate with the occult and the other world. Graveyards, tombs, remote and shadowy places. Annabelle, I think we should go home. Yes, we need to get I'm out of here right now. We have to finish the ritual. We stay here. Are you serious? There's no way we can what stay here right now. What are you talking about? All right, OK, you, fine, fine. You guys want to leave? You want to leave? Then yes. you go ahead. Leave. What? You'll be cast out of the circle forever. Come on, Annabelle. You are don't so be dramatic. Way. Let's just fine. Fine. Finish fine. This. fine. Here we go. Just finish this and go, please. Please let, let's, let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Should do it. We. Uh, let's go.
Spirits having risen, behold our communion. Allow this neophyte to drink the spirit's blood so that she too may become one of us. Annabelle, just put what are you doing? What was that? <coughs> the ceremony was now complete, and Nora, having survived Annabelle's prank of having her drink a fake blood concoction, was officially inducted into the group. That was pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> Nora, I give you the gift of sight. You're one of us now. All right. Awesome. Okay, guys, can we go now? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Stuff. Yeah, let's pack up the let's stuff and get out of here. Yeah, we oh, wow. Oh, oh, man. I was seriously man, scared someone... when you were doing that. that was awesome. Awesome. I, like, <sighs> had no scary. idea what was going that was cool. on. We I know. Totally really terrified. <laughs> that was awesome. It was wicked. Seriously, oh, everyone's so very well freaked out. I cannot wait yeah. for people to see this. I am so sorry. I did not know she was going to do that. I need to ask you the dog that you saw. Did you see it twice? Why? I just, I need, it's really important. I need to know. Can you just what? tell me why? Oh, God. You better run, okay? Severin, run. What's going on? Do you hear something? Don't look back. Whatever you do, do not look at it. Come on. We have to get away from it. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Get down. Okay. Oh, my God. Close your eyes. Okay, okay, okay. What's happening? Don't open your eyes. Whatever happens, okay? Please, please okay, like, do okay. not open your eyes. I think so, yeah. No, I think we're good. We're fine. Yeah! Uh, Ophelia, Annabelle, Severin. Oh my god. Go, 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 go
go, 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 I'm trying, it won't start. What, what, what are you talking about? Start the car. It won't start. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. You guys are convinced that you're going to die because the car doesn't start? It started. Do you believe you'll live? Oh, my God. Shut up. Just go. I go. I go. Get out of Severin? Severin. You looked. There are no official records of Honora Kallerman being registered at the university. Her true identity remains a mystery. Annabelle, Luna, Ophelia, and Severin were all pronounced dead on the scene. Traces of sulfur were discovered on and around their vehicle, but no evidence of a dog or other canine species was detected. The images captured on video that night of a harmless prank gone horribly wrong present us with a grim and unsettling proposition. Are these beasts purely the stuff of nightmarish lore, or do they live among us?